This guy, his name is Rex Suvari, and Rex is in a lot of trouble. Rex is a local gold buyer in the mainland of Sandown province in Papua New Guinea. On December 5, 2023, Rex was at Bata's Wutung border post, the border of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia. He was trying to find the latest price of gold as he was carrying his gold trying to sell. No one knows he has the gold. All of a sudden, three Papua New Guinea different force soldiers approached him and three others and began searching them. The soldiers didn't find anything illegal and decided to let them go. As Rex was about to leave, the soldiers called him back and asked him carefully and quietly, Do you have something valuable in your position right now? Rex honestly replied to them, I have my goal now, and I am not trying to sell the goal. I'm just here trying to see opportunities to sell and checking prices. I'll take my goal to Port Mosby later and sell them there. As those soldiers heard this, their eyes lit up. One of the soldiers, allegedly a Highlander, he told Rex, Look, I have to search the goal and the bag again. So Rex let him search him the second time. This time, the soldier took out Rex's goal, and it was big, weighing around 1.62 kilograms, which would worth around 401,382 kina in current Papua New Guinea gold price. That soldier took the goal and took another additional 1,300 kina cash that was in the bag. After that, they told Rex to go. But Rex was handicapped now that his goal has been taken and cash taken. Rex pleaded with them to give the goal back, but they threatened him. If you don't listen, we will call our commander and the PPC to come arrest you and you will go to prison. With a heart broken, Rex hopped on the bus and went back to Wanimo, which is the capital of Sandown province. He immediately reported the case to the police, but the police did little. During the following weeks, Rex created a Facebook account, posted this injustice on Facebook. He posted on his account, he posted on the province development forum groups. One day, one week later, he met the soldier that took his goal in a Chinese shop. And that soldier badly beaten him up and took him to the police station, where all the police were there. The police were unable to pursue the case and requested Rex to get that case up to the Ombudsman Commission. This made Rex, who is a common villager, more confused. Rex didn't give up. He kept on posting and this kept the attention of everyone. People are calling out to the soldiers to give the gold back, calling them thief and all sorts of names. And some people even advised Rex to go straight to the courthouse to put a complaint and even some offered to help Rex up with the legal process. Not long after this happens, finally on 8 January his goal was written. But we wouldn't know if all of it were written or only some of it. There was a body hanging on a rope outside on the top of the two stories business studies building. Everyone who woke up early rushed to the scene to see. In the early morning of August 15, 2018, around 4 o'clock a.m., students at the Diwan Wad University in Medang Province, Papua New Guinea, woke up with a tragic, horrifying news that there was a deceased male body which was hanged on top of the business studies building. There was a rope tied around the neck. The body was identified as Christopher Sauni, a male 28 years from West Epic Province, Waromo Village. The police were called in and according to the initial impression, where the body was hanging with a rope tied to his neck, it was ruled as by police. But after the first day and careful check and observation of the body, the police were convinced that there must be foul play involved and an investigation was launched into this death. The police started interviewing everyone close to Christopher, but there was no reason why Christopher would have taken his own life, according to the interviews, and they have no leads. Christopher was a third year business student. He was a happy young man who was adamant to complete his studies. He dropped out of high school and stayed out of school for a long time. Getting admitted to the university was his chance to complete his studies. He was a hard worker. He has a girlfriend back in his home village and home province that was waiting for him. Both of them were hopeful for the future. There were no relationship issues that would have escalated Christopher to take his own life. His parents and relatives were happy for Christopher because he was going somewhere with his life after staying out of school for so long. Eventually, post-mortem report was ready. The report revealed and suggested that Christopher was dead before he was hung on the building. There were bruises and signs of struggle on the neck apart from the marks of the rope that his head has been hanged from. All his other parts of the body were okay. There were no bone fractures or any cuts or lacerations. According to some witnessing students at the time of the body was discovered, his face appeared grossly swollen and was black in color. And there were rope marks on his neck and other minor bruises on the neck. They thought he might have been suffocated by a piece of cloth, where the piece of cloth was soaked in some poisonous fluids. The body was found around 4 o'clock a.m. The detectives investigating the case suggested that Christopher was between 1.30 a.m. to 4 a.m. during his study time. He was probably alleged to have been stabbed to death before being hung with the rope. According to some students, the ICT building where the body was hanged has some CCTV camera around. 
But there were no one captured by the CCTV. This gives the idea that whoever did this has a clear sound knowledge of the area. He knew where the CCTV cameras were looking and he or they avoid the camera on purpose. The police also suggested that the manner in which his body was hanged cannot be the work of one person only, but more than two people must have been involved. After three weeks of investigation, an arrest was made. An ICT third year student by the name of Neville Kuduk was arrested. Neville was a received weird person. He posts dark team photos on his Facebook account. He doesn't talk too much and is eccentric in nature. He finished secondary school in Kerewat National High School in Kokobo. The motive of the crime was not known, but the police believed it could be motivated by satanic cult practices. After Neville was detained, there were no news regarding the case after that. Whether Neville was questioned and subsequent arrests made were not known. Christopher's father waited in Madden for some answers for his son's matter, but the wait proved too costly so he had to go back to his place in Wanimo. There were so many questions without answers in this case. Who Christopher? What's the motive of the king? What's the method used to kill? What's the matter happen? Why did the case die like this? Did the police correct this case? What happened to Neville after he was detained? What's the outcome of the investigation? What's the outcome of investigating Neville? Did Neville make Christopher? Did Neville guilty of the crime? Did Neville give up some names? Was it a purely cult motive to Christopher? If you know anything about this case, please comment in the section below. This guy, let's call him Solo, and he's from the highlands of Papua New Guinea. One thing that is wrong with this guy is that he has been unalived. He's dead. On the 2nd of January 2023, his lifeless body was brought to the emergency department by a police officer and a soldier without any clothes on. No proper information about his identity was given, so the hospital duty staff named him Anon Tuesday. Deceased, just to keep records in order. In order to understand his story, let's go back one week in time, the days from Christmas leading up to the New Year's time. During that period of time, a local policeman was looking for a man, solo who allegedly has been causing several troubles in the area. The one big reason that the policeman is going after him was that he assaulted the policeman's son some time ago. On the New Year's Eve, 31st December 2023, going to 12 o'clock midnight, he was drinking with some of his friends. There was a girl drinking with them. Deep into the New Year's drinking celebration, the girl was drunk, so she went into the kitchen to sleep. After a few minutes, he, solo, followed the girl and did things to her. I wouldn't say the word. The word starts with R. After he was done, he escaped. Now we need to understand that Solo was from the highlands. The community he was living in is Wutun village from the border of Papua New Guinea and Indonesia, Sandown province. The girl he assaulted belonged to Wutun. Now that the news spread out about the incident, everyone in the village was looking for him, including the policeman. The next day, he was captured by the angry youths who were relatives of the girl. He was physically assaulted by more than 10 youths until he succumbed to his injuries. He was rushed to the hospital by the policeman who was the police man that has been looking for him recently and another soldier. But unfortunately, he passed away. In the next three days, more than 15 youths from Butung village were detained by police. Post-mortem reports, as was told, he received multiple blunt trauma to his head and multiple bands, allegedly from a flame of firecrackers. Now, despite this story, there were many questions without answers surrounding this. While he was running away and hiding, he was advised by some of his friends to turn himself up to the police for his safety. Remember, this was not his village. Why wouldn't he turn himself in early? Was it that he was afraid more from the villagers, the girl's relatives, or the police that was after him regarding the sun's beating? Another question is, moments after he would passed away, he was on a vehicle leaving Wotun to go to Wanimo. And he got a phone call from his brother in Wanimo that the, some police and PNGDF soldiers were on the same road to Wutung. Instead of trailing into Wanimo, he jumped off the vehicle and ran into the nearby bush to hide. That's where he was found by the youths who badly beaten him up. That brings up another question again. Who was he afraid of? The villagers or the police and the soldiers? Why would he jump off the vehicle when he himself knows that it's dangerous? He offended those people already by assaulting their daughter. Another question is... After he was beaten by the youths, it was unclear whether he was still alive or passed away already. The known story to everyone was he was dead before arriving at the hospital. Remember, the same policeman and the soldier dropped him off at the hospital. And the drive from Wooten Willis to Wanimo Hospital would roughly, would roughly be around 50 minutes to one hour. Investigations are still going on. The police needed to do a good investigation to crack this case.